right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Coffee with the Geek program. It is now May of 2024. The year is just flying by here. Uh, with me is a really special guest and someone I'm just meeting for the first time. And Anna, I came across your work through uh, Twitter and through Wakelet. I saw you post a lot of really great uh, stuff there, but you do so much more than that. And Anna, I don't want to mistakenly mispronounce your name. So your last name, will you pronounce that for me? Sure. Dagileva. All right. See, I would have, <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten that one, but so you are from Kirov, Russia, and you've been teaching for over 13 years, uh, 12 years. You've been providing online professional development and you're the founder of Teachers Love EDU. I hope you'll talk a little bit about that. And a YouTuber, always fun. So you're kind of an influencer, right? Something like, you know, we are wearing so many hats this day. So I am i don't know uh, which one to mention for the very first <laughs> thing, you know, to go. I know. It is a lot, isn't it? Um, so you love integrating. Oh, well, let me do this. So you're a Microsoft expert. So yes, MI. that's right a master trainer, MIE fellow, certified trainer on Flipgrid and Wakelet, uh, both really great ed tech products. <laughs> um, you yes. love integrating new technologies. Uh, your goal is to create a safe space, which is, I think, really important nowadays. Because sure. technology yes. can become so overwhelming. And I think adding the layer of artificial intelligence also Absolutely kind of agree. adds a, a layer of safety that we need to kind of consider. Um, so you've been a presenter at a Microsoft accessibility, CEE accessibility workshop, engaging with, with content using Microsoft tools. Uh, love Microsoft. It sounds like you're doing a lot with Microsoft. Uh, yes. and you are um, the host of Microsoft Tweet Meet on hybrid learning. You've been a presenter on creating an equitable and accessible learning environment with help from Windows, Microsoft. And geez, what else? Uh, Project-based learning, global collaboration. <laughs> and your favorite quote is, every child has the right to a quality education and learning. I love that. It's yes. a great way to start yes. things off. So uh, with that, again, welcome, Anna. And um, tell Thank me about, do you have a favorite coffee blend or are you a coffee drinker or something else? I love coffee. So I drink coffee daily. So, and I start my day with a cup of coffee and it's always Americana since I've got a very cool coffee machine at home. So, but whenever I go out, so I prefer a cappuccino with plant milk only, otherwise it's Americana again. <laughs> wow. Okay. Good. So you're, you're right in line with, with us here in America. So let's <laughs> talk. Um, I've given just kind of that, you know, elevator speech of your background, but can you tell me about your educational journey? Um, what are your inspirations? Where, how did it start as, as an educator? All those good things. So. Gosh, such a great question. Uh, actually, my family didn't want me to be a teacher because, you know, like a school teacher, because they thought it will bring me to disappointment point or something like this, probably because of the conditions of our local schools where i was born uh, at that area. And so I decided to get my first degree as a specialist in social culture, uh, service and tourism, <laughs> which is like, why? Because I love languages and traveling. So these were my two gems. And my mom, she told me, okay, you can take it, but not, not into pedagogy, too overwhelming. Uh, she knows that I'm very enthusiastic and all of these things, but, but I I have been teaching in my toys since I was a child. So, but I don't know, probably because of the situation with local schools made my family um, and it's got me to the point that not into pedagogy. But then, so um, after my first graduation, I uh, started to work as a language teacher. And then, <laughs> so it took me four years because I started my uh, two diplomas in pedagogy and psychology and also in law. <laughs> so which is like two different and opposite directions, but wow. I made it. I spent my four years um, like slightly breathing because it was super hard for me. I was so close to, you know, to leave them or these two diplomas or whatever, because I worked hard. Um, and uh, but I made it through. I got my two diplomas, uh, like all in all three. 
uh, very proud of that. <laughs> and then I passed my Cambridge exams, uh, teaching Cambridge exams. So I had to go to another city and pass them to, I, I wanted to be a cool teacher, I guess, because it's something that you, we always want to prove to someone uh, and take too much, I think. I spent too much money on that. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is my first journey where I decided my first degree, my mom, she paid for that. So I'm so grateful to her. And then I invested in myself because I worked and um, I tried to get my two diplomas all at once. So <laughs> it was overwhelming. But anyway, I had this experience and I knew that I, I want to be an entrepreneur. For sure, I need to know the law, all of this stuff, you know. So that's what uh, why my choice uh, got to the law. Uh, and then, of course, other courses. But these days, so many courses and professional development, they're for free. So... I feel so grateful for that part as well. I keep learning. Learning never stops. This is the motto of Microsoft Education. That's why I love it so much. And uh, again, when I started to provide uh, language courses, I got my first dyslexic learners. And when I saw the video of Mike Tolson from Microsoft, he's like someone that, there's a question about who inspires me the most, like he does. And uh, with Sonia, I forgot her last name, I wanted to spoil me with my pronunciation. And they were making, um, they were sharing with the power of immersive reader. And I was crying because I saw how powerful it is. And every child uh, can feel the sense of belonging in the classroom because I know how dyslexic learners, they struggle, especially if you teach them second language. Oh my gosh, they're struggling to read in their first language. And that's, and here we go. You know, that's very, I'm so passionate about inclusivity and accessibility since that time. And um, and these days I'm even more passionate because when things are restricted or some, I don't see the point to restrict education for children. Never, never did that, never does that. So, so this is something about that uh, my um, educational background, uh, all the all the um, all the roads lead to Rome. This is uh, about my background. So because <laughs> <laughs> my family right. said, "No, please don't do that." But you know, I'm um, I'm in the private sector right now, so I provide um, extra classes. But these days, I think this is the best option for my area, for my country. And I because I use the technologies that help my students for sure to be uh, successful learners and then uh, people in 21st century who can use and again, integrate technologies, AI and all of these things. I learned from my PLN. I'm so grateful. And uh, this is the best part. I never stop learning. So that's the motto. I think it's it's essential. It's my engine. <laughs> yeah, I think that's so important. And you mentioned Mike Tolson. Uh, I interviewed him for the Coffee with the Geek <gasps> program a few years so ago. Jealous. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he was a great guy, easy to connect with. And he he's actually, I think, um, yeah, he's, he's so versatile with his technology. I think maybe, I can't remember if he was interviewing from his phone or whatever, but I felt like I was walking around with him as he was walking around, you know, <laughs> Microsoft. Um, but I think he does a great job with his tutorials. And oh my gosh, yes. When I was I was embedded in a Microsoft district and he was like my go-to person, everything new. And he does such a great job of explaining things in a quick and easy manner. Uh, so Microsoft is lucky to have him. He's, he's, as you said, he's an inspiration in how it can be done and done well. And you mentioned, you know, Microsoft and some of the tools uh, you mentioned um, immersive. You mentioned, yeah, the immersive reader is really a game changer for a lot of um, you know accessibility issues. But I also yes. I don't know if you've worked with Reading Progress. Have you seen yes, that? Yes, uh, of, of course, it's the best. Just today uh, we had uh, the podcast with the uh, in, in founder of Ego AI, and they use the same engine uh, as a reading coach. I think it's always super beneficial to have it for like. For every platform that is connected to reading languages, I think everyone should learn. It's not that I'm so passionate and crazy about languages, but I think everyone should learn at least one more language than the native ones. So this is the perfect. And because sometimes families are, they come from another country, uh, like comparing to the country where their children go to school. And, you know, this is like 
always a gem when we have got the tools of uh, accessibility and inclusivity. So all, always beneficial for everybody. <laughs> everybody wins from that. Yeah. And everybody is, everyone is included, as I mentioned. It's, it's very important, yes. Anna, so I don't have a lot of uh, background on education in in Russia. So in America, we have basically pre-K, you know, then we have primary school, which is K-2. Same. And we have uh, middle, you know, three, five is elementary, and then roughly, you know, six, seven to eight is uh, middle school. And then we have nine through 12 high school. Is that the way it works? Russia's nine to 11 way? here, nine to 11. So uh, stud uh, children, they go to pre-Ks, like uh, to the kindergartens till they are oh, five, six for sure. At six and seven, they go to the first grade. So they're first graders, primary school till the uh, fourth grade these days, I think. And then uh, from the fifth till 11, they go through this path uh, until the graduation. So they graduated in 11th. Yes, that's right. Okay. So, um, and then how do, how does like universities get selected? Cause I know in Europe there's different models. Um, is it, are you putting kind of a track to go to university? Is it something you just apply for? How does that work? Uh, some of them, they are, um, like some categories you need to pay money. Of course, we've got like something, but it's, it's really not easy to get there that the government pay for them. Uh, you decide whatever you like. Sometimes parents decide, decide you know, what's you, if, if uh, students are struggling with the making decisions, we don't have one gap year. You know, if you're a successful person, you have to go to the university just right after school. So, but I personally don't understand that. We, we learn with my students, you know, like culture exchange thing about uh, how students um, act after they uh, like finish their schools. So they've got like one year gap or something sometimes. It's so often I, in the US, probably on the, in the UK, so I don't, don't quite remember that. And my students, they love that idea. They said, ah, oh, we really want to, like we need to, because it's so stressful. I know their final exams is so much stress and they do not know yet sometimes where to go, what they want to be in their lives. So that's something, you know, they try to, uh, it depends on their family conditions, like if they can afford the university, if it's not for free, you know, there are lots of options. They can go to college after the ninth grade. There's one great option as well. These days, parents, they are not, they, not all of them think this way, like you need to finish school, you need to go to school till the 11th grade, like it was before. Now they think that college is more, you know, practical thing. It will get you some more Mm, like deeper learning or something uh, like that can help them to be more successful in the future careers since their pass of, you know, the selection of choices is less because they know uh, where to go for sure. You know, the college is something like if you want to be a chef, you go to college, then you or doctor or, you know, someone in medicine. That's I think it's more beneficial for them. Now, your English is very good. Do you, um, are, is Thank you. Languages, are languages required in, in Russian schools? Uh, um, it, it's a tricky situation because it was said that the English final exam w w would be like must have thing. But these days it's not. And uh, as it's said, students, when they finish their school, they should have the level like B1 intermediate, like a pre intermediate strong intermediate but it's not i can say for sure that the fluent english is not so popular like in russia of course there are many people who can speak it but it's not official language at all it's not even second official language here uh, it's uh, something that you need to train with your tutor i guess not at school it's not possible to, i don't know probably some private super uh, g gymnasiums or something they can provide this deeper learning stuff about languages but like this fluently not at school i i don't i can't say for sure like okay. sorry so, not <laughs> required all the mm -hmm. so let's talk about wakelet because wakelet is really where i came across kind of your posts um, tell me what you think of Wakelet. Tell me how you use Wakelet. Tell me how other educators could benefit from Wakelet. 
Andy, please stop me at any point because I can talk about Wakelet for hours. <laughs> Seriously. It's like, please, Anna. <laughs> uh, it's, it's absolutely my gem and I love Wakelet so much. I think um, when they only start, not only, but um, they were not so popular in pedagogy like around educators. I, I They asked some teachers from different countries to translate their ebook for teachers. So I was one who translated into Russian. And that's when I started to love Wakelet so much. And um, it was like, first we thought about Wakelet as organizer, but for me, you know, um, these days especially, I think of Wakelet as a neuron thing, uh, you know, like brain, because you can organize it and make anything you want, a limitless possibilities. Of course, you can do the same, probably you would say in the Word uh, doc or Google Docs or Word Online or something, but not the same way. Being a visual person like me, I don't have that much creativity or ideas. They don't come into my head, you know, if I just work in Google Doc or something. But when it take, comes to Wakelet, so I can say that uh, there's limitless number of possibilities. Of course, some more features I would love to integrate, but so far, so good, so far, so far, so good, whatever. It's already so cool. And I love the accessibility from the very beginning. Immersive Reader started to be there. I love the inclusivity of this tool again. And there are so many great features you can. I use Wakelet every day. I can't say about other platforms. But Wakelet saves not only my professional area, but my personal space. Because we are diving in the tabs, like ocean of tabs, ocean of information. So I want to be at to look at more organized. It's still I'm still messy, but not that much. Because I know that I've got collections since, oh my gosh, 2019, 2020, oh, long time. You know, it's uh, such a great history, and I can make a museum. I'm you know, showing you so many things you can take you can create projects and you can collaborate which is like super beneficial feature again and so uh, you can create your personal spaces and save your favorite uh notes songs <laughs> i don't know so many things can be done i always suggest people to follow to my wakelet profile as i am the first who started suggested as a landing page it was my thing for wakelet community week last year and landing page for free go to wakelet um you know you can it's easy i don't want any tool that overwhelm me like um what's the name of the website word ugh, so popular and you please help me word website engines the most popular ones oh wordpress or wordpress i'm yeah. sorry but it's too hard for me to navigate yeah. it i'm a teacher right. i'm wearing so many hats i don't have that much time to organize this engines like weeks like a uh, uh, google website i'm sorry it's i don't like it <laughs> i love google sorry guys but this is my wakeled is my personal choice and uh you can share with everything you want people can follow you these days they can be even notified that you added some new content it works same way yeah. i love it so yeah, it really so many things dynamic. And spaces, like on website, but there's limitless number, no limit. Create your things, organize it like spaces, add as many collections as you want. In, but there are some, um, like, uh, for not for free everything. So there is a limit for collections that you can share and collaborate. But this is it. Inside of one wakelet, you can create the whole universe. Another landing page, which is like wow. Yeah, yeah, it really is a great tool and. And I'm sure you've probably met many of the people at Wakelet and their their heart is in the right place, right? They, they've got kind of educators hearts and so many of the tools are free and easy to use. And, you know, the other pieces that you pay for are, are, are certainly um, valuable, but, the, but they've kept kind of the core of it in the free plan. Yes, especially since last year, my one word of that year it was simplicity because we are so tired gosh we were so tired and now we're just getting back to the normal things but still you know i don't want to waste my time that's why ai technologies are so popular and before i had like double thoughts about that you know but nowadays okay show me new one and i will decide if i like it or not because i want to stick to them they save our time so much <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so tell me about um, Teachers Love EDU and tell me about your YouTube adventures. And then tell me if there's any other projects you're thinking of. What, what's your next steps in your career? Um, actually, Teachers Love EDU, it's not about even uh, merch or money. It's It, it was, it, it will be, I think um, it is for now. It's something that the spirit for teachers, you know how I came up to that idea that uh, everywhere where like conferences, all the same people are sharing about the same platforms. Oh, dear God. But you can't be that, you, you can't have that much expertise, you know, in every field. I, I, I myself, so I'm very energetic. I know lots of things, but I'm not good at everything like my colleague could be or someone, you know. So the idea of Teachers Love It was to invite real teachers without a, even any background even to present life. So we had some nerve together. <laughs> I've got anxiety. So for me, every life, it's a little bit stressful thing. But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm so empowered every time. I'm so inspired because I always um, invite, I think, the most inspiring people like teachers, they, they start when they start sharing, say, I'm just a regular teacher. I don't have anything to share. I'm not a great speaker. I don't need speaker. I don't need a speaker because, you know, they know what to do. They share the same thing, sometimes not too practical. Um, so I want real teachers because they, teachers who start using technology in the classrooms, they give us the tips, the things that need to be improved. So, and every platform developer should keep an eye and provide things only for free for teachers. This is what I think. This is how I feel. Of course, if your school district can pay for stuff, that's good because platform developers, the same way, they need money <laughs> to support their, um, inventions. But all in all, teachers, they are who, the, the people, the most important people in the world. That's what I think. And Yeah, yes. you're right. You're right. That's, yeah, and that's really what my design was for the Coffee with the Geek show is just to interview wow. kind of everyday people, uh, teachers, especially in, in all in brands. So, yeah, Amazing. got a similar mindset. So what... Um, are there some projects you're thinking of, or, or maybe let's let's take it this direction? Uh, artificial intelligence here in the U.S. is all the it's it's the talk, but we haven't mm -hmm. really seen it filter in schools per se. Um, what are your thoughts on AI and where it's going and what it's going to do to education? Big question. Um, what I feel. Thank you for a good, great question because we are talking a lot about AI these days, and um, my guests as well. They always share about AI tools. I think it's going to be a great competition very soon. So I highly recommend to all the platform developers to make sure that it's super accessible, that you've got free accounts to try because, um, you know, they are developing every day and um, it's we can't stop it. And I don't want to stop it. I'm using AI these days uh, in my teaching. I, I don't want to leave my students because I want to see uh, how they grow with the new technologies as well. And uh, it's super helpful. I love worksheets at Magic School AI. At School School AI, there's so many names, and everywhere AI is. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are two ones I've seen as well. Yes, but... any, any concerns? I mean, I I have some kind of you know maybe it's because I grew up watching you know the Terminator movies or something <laughs> and see Thanks. you know uh, you know if if AI gets put into weapon systems uh, that's that worries me a little bit, but oh, it also, yeah. there's kind of a ringing in the back of my head sometimes, and I'll give you a, a personal example. So um, I'm part of, you know, a bunch of tech tech committees, you know, so I thought, oh, I'm going to go to a tech committee. I don't have a lot of time. Let me put our, an agenda together using AI. So I did it, you know, and it printed out a really nice agenda for me. Um, but I also kind of feel like, I, you know, almost yeah. like I cheated, you know, and, and also, you know, I felt like, and maybe it didn't represent the meeting that I was going to, you know? So I feel like sometimes there's there's pride in ownership of doing something yourself rather than having something else do it, you know? Thoughts on, thoughts on that? I love these thoughts. I would love to invite you to, <laughs> because we need to spread it. It's such a great thought uh, for sure. And, uh, you know, we were ha more hardworking those days. 
that's true but uh, we had a great discussion again uh there were two pain points that a teacher brought a founder slash teacher uh paul rain he said that uh, first, that bothers teachers because his platform totally, you know, uh, checks all the writing of students. They can check their reading without a teacher or something. And so w will that AI replace teachers? And the second one is that w why then students should learn language? If everything, you know, is here you go. Translation, here you go. Okay, this one. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, th these are two good questions too. What, what, he, what we came up with, uh, that AI chooses randomly the way the picture should be created. You know, it's very interesting. So there is no algorithm for that. That scares me. <laughs> this part is like, if it thinks without any algorithm these days, like randomly. So what is going on? Like, what, what it's going to be soon with everything. So this is something that we, we need to be careful with. Uh, the points of mine, Sincha, I consider myself a creative person. <laughs> so some many people actually, they claim that AI isn't that creative and creativity won't be beaten by AI. But you see this random ch uh, choice of AI, like, like what is that? Isn't, but it's, they s still say it's not creativity. It's something that is already, that's taken from uh, the things that have been already created by someone, you know, it's right. somewhere yeah. from the data, this stuff, the sources that have been shared. So I strongly believe that creativity and AI can be a genius. Genius is something about human brain and all the traumas that we had in our childhood, you know, that's what makes you like my, my childhood was a bit dramatic. Sometimes I think about that, but why should I think of that? I am what I am. So it's, it's okay. So well different. And this is diversity is individuality. This is what I don't, this is the point where I don't want to use AI. I want to still use my pictures. Please stop using only AI. This AI avatars are everywhere. <laughs> and I, uh, anyway, I don't want to live in metaverse or something. I want to be real. I want to go to the real gym if I can. If you if you can't, of course, there must be event for everyone. You know, when you can feel yourself, whoever you want, like the right. Superman, a superhero. It's it's empowering, but not to live the uh, li your life in digital space only. Yeah. Okay, so um, now it's time for the speed geek question. So I'll throw kind of three at you, any three. So uh, these are meant to be kind of like light and lively and kind of just straight to the point. So I'll start off with uh, what's your favorite social network? Gosh, that's a great story of mine. <laughs> so I I understand them all, how they works, like the engines again. I, I know how they works. I, that's how. That's why I feel myself so very comfortable to use them all: YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, or X, whatever, Facebook. But you know, my journey started with um, I started to use Twitter or X. I think later than my PLN because in Russia it wasn't that popular at all. People still don't know how to use X and what is it? It is really? all about. Yes. Wow. So I got a little bit upset. I said I hate Twitter. I hate it. But then <laughs> you know, I was invited to Twitter chats or something. How they called Twitter chats? Yeah, Twitter I hosted meets or tw Twitter meets. Yeah. Yeah. I hosted one of them and was uh, invited for several. So I, I, I understood how it works. Uh, and then I said, wow, Twitter is uh, awesome. I love Twitter. It's my network. It's uh, the place where I learn from people and uh, integrate it. Then I said that I hate Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but when the COVID started and all the crazy things that are happening in this world, I got so depressed and Twitter was overwhelmed with uh, you know negativity and uh, every social got super into politics and stuff. And I discovered that Instagram is my emotional space where I could be more creative with my visuals. I shared my food, you know, I more concentrated on emotional parts and my music that I share with my community. And that's my Instagram is my number one these days. I love sharing with real people. Uh, who support me, who love me, who I love, I want to support. You know, something more visual, something more about social emotional learning as well, connection. This is Instagram for sure. Twitter is less these days. And I feel that that everybody um, like got 
colder to that social probably maybe yeah. there's a reason <laughs> a part of that so um, yeah no you're right i agree and, and instagram is probably my number one at this point and wow. i do like it because it's you know um it, it feels better you don't feel like so heavy and overwhelmed because they throw a lot of comedy videos and you know that's yes right. yes that's same feeling. Self-help, self-help and recipes and things that kind of benefit you, I think. Yes, that's true. My cat. <laughs> I know. It's a boy or a girl? What's it's just a girl. Oh. Businka. It's like busia, ah. businka. <laughs> She's very cute. Very Scottish. cute. Scottish. She's Scottish, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what's... Um, Tell me your favorite educational blog. Do you have like a blog or a website that you go to? Is she kind of your... Oh God, this is, I, I think Microsoft's in education, uh, Microsoft Learn, sorry, these days it's Microsoft Learn, all in all. Um, um, blogs are in every platform actually these days. You can go to Book Creator, you can find cool blogs. You can go to Adobe in education, you can find cool blogs as well. So I think I learned from my best, <laughs> still learning from Microsoft Learn. And probably if I will come up with something new, Yes, uh, you can find lots of great uh, live events on the Microsoft Flip. They share a lot about Microsoft tools these days. So stay tuned to Microsoft Flip as well. Uh, my uh, like my recommendation, Wake Up Community Week is happening this year as well. So you can find lots of things. But the uh, not temporary, but always to go place is Microsoft Learn. So you can go, you can grab your certificates. Everything is for free. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, they do a great job with that program. I, I like it. Um, yeah, I've, I've done the Google certification as well, and that's much more heavy. Yeah, uh, it's, it's yes, it is. I tried. I, I passed some probably. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, last question. So, are you a gamer, and what is your game? Um, no, I'm not. You know, because <laughs> I spend way too much time in digital space in front of my PC. Uh, lots of social since you know again content creator promoter you, lots of things online and my uh, i think most of my friends they're from different countries so i have enough of that uh, i would love to try it but i don't want to spend my time on that i prefer to go to the parks to the cafes you know to meet with my real friends like not i mean real but uh, sure. in this yeah. in this <laughs> uh, in real life so i've got lots of friends even you know, oh, that's a great way to answer that. And it actually, it actually kind of answered one of my other questions they ask is like, what's your favorite way to unplug? So it sounds like. Forests, trees, nature. So I'm a, I'm a big lover of nature. It makes me feel more peaceful and grounded because, you know, when you get anxiety or you go, you are so overwhelmed, you, you are too excited about things, even positive or, you know, about negative stuff in the world so you need to feel yourself like you are a part of this universe world just go to the forest i always say go for a walk no nothing except probably my music my headset is always on my head and i'm listening to my favorite <laughs> playlist life is good right. when it's on well anna thank you so much it was a pleasure meeting you from across the miles and i'm gonna keep on keep track of you on uh instagram and wake clip. So keep up the great work in YouTube. So thank you, Andy. It was my pleasure chatting and uh, the one to stop actually. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I know we can keep chatting. So thank you. Thank you so much.